Welcome to Top Table Gaming. This is an Articon 2019 review video. Welcome to Top Table Gaming. You're here with your host, Top Table Ben, and today I have a very, very special guest with me. Um, a lot of you will already know him. It's Mr. James Clark of Hotgates Gaming fame, of GBHL fame, <laughs> of Articon fame. Basically, anything. If you know, if you play SBG, you will know James. Hello, Thank James. Uh, well, I'm, I'm much better now that you've massaged my ego. <laughs> much, much I know needed. you would be. I knew you would be. If any of you still know me from the likes of Hot Gates Gaming or the GBH Your Podcast, then you must have very long memories because it's been a, been a while. Go back and check those videos out. Go back and check out Hot Gates Gaming. I'm on some of those videos when I first started playing as well. You'll see examples of how not to play, shall we say. But uh, I, you think, know. I think your first appearances on YouTube are with me. Oh, they definitely are, yeah. On the GBS Your Podcast or Hot Gates Gaming? One of the two. One, One of, of the, the two. two. And probably the same for Jay and definitely the same for Steve. So <laughs> you could call me the Kingmaker. You, you could. You... <laughs> I think we've massaged your ego enough now. Without I'm not James, getting back out the door. Without James, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't be sat in this seat. But as I said in the intro, we are here to talk about Articon 29, which was just last weekend. So we're now on Friday. Yeah, you still tired? Um, uh, I've, I've now recovered just a little bit. How are you feeling? I'm exhausted. I've not recovered. <laughs> I've got a newborn baby in the house, so I've gone from days of zero sleep to more days of zero sleep. So, well, there we go then. So, um, you know, we're, 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 we're all kind of getting on with, with our lives after it now. And we've we've had a bit of time to kind of dwell on what's what's happened over the weekend. Um, it is quite a long weekend, so it is three days of gaming, but obviously there is a bit of prep that goes in ahead of it. And there is some work that goes on after it, which mostly goes down to uh, to yourself. Absolutely not. I've got, a fantastic, <laughs> I've got a fantastic events team. And for those of you that aren't aware, Ben Bowles is effectively my, uh, my ops manager. <laughs> if you're going to try and sort of create uh, terms of titles, he basically does all the jobs that I don't want to do, which is amazing <laughs> and very, very important. So this is a really great opportunity for me to say thank you. Because without thank you, you. Without, without the ref team, without Andrew Cox doing the tech support, without PMG on the front desk, without everybody, uh, Articon couldn't happen. So thank you very, very, no, very much. Yeah. Absolute pleasure. Love being part of it. And uh, every year I sort of think, oh my God, that was really hard work. But then afterwards, I just think, let's do this again. I cannot wait for next year. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna have a bit of a catch up, have a discussion about kind yeah. of the, the tournament itself. Cool. So first up, tell me about Articon. Kind of what was your vision for Articon when you first started setting it up? Uh, so the first tournament that I was lucky enough to be involved in was Desolation of Stockport with the fantastic Jamie Giblin, who's my partner in crime on the Great uh, Great British Hockey League podcast, the GBHL podcast, as it as it became to be known. Um, and through the growth of the GBHL podcast, uh, me and the guys, Damien and Tom, which some of you might know from SBG Magazine or the Planter Show on the yeah. GBHL podcast, you will you will all know Tom and Damien because we have. We bang on about them all the time. We've got a beautiful board that they have very Absolutely. generously That's given amazing. us. Yeah, um, so we uh, we have played out a battle report on that. So expect to see out on the channel very soon. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no problem at all. <laughs> um, so we were the GBHL podcast team a little bit before. Um, invited Steve to come and get involved. Uh, your very own top table uh, gaming Steve, uh, and we were blessed to be and very privileged to be invited over to the Nova Open by the very generous guys over in the DCHL, the DC Hobbit League, mm -hmm. uh, led by Devin Moreno. Uh, undoubtedly this experience of going to the Hyatt Regency uh, in Arlington, Virginia and experiencing something on that scale, I've, ne I've never been to anything like that before. Yeah. You know, just a, a hotel rampart full of nerds. Um, <laughs> Gamers, and yeah, absolutely. From from all different games, gaming systems, not yeah. just for Lord of the Rings strategy battle gamers. It was at, at the time Hobbit strategy battle gamers. It was at the time, um, but also for X Wing and Malifaux and for other systems. And it was just a very very special environment. And could not help coming back and feeling like being part of the GBHL podcast team over there, playing as part of a team, going to a different country, um, being hosted by the most generous hosts and wonderful human beings. Um, that I would love to replicate something like that over here in the UK if it was at all possible. So other people, um, you know, had had the opportunity to experience that mm -hmm. uh, basically. So that's that's where the Articon idea came from, uh, and then and then I guess it was the kind of the practical putting together of that, which was the next stage. Yeah. Okay. So tell us where 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 is it held every year? 
Uh, so we hold it at the Mercure, Manchester Piccadilly, which is in central Manchester. Mm-hmm. Uh, finding event space mm-hmm. uh, in the UK, which is suitable to host that number of gamers or the number of gamers that, that I felt that we needed in order to justify, um, I guess, selling it as being the scale that it was, uh, is, is very, very, very difficult, especially you know the kind of prices that you get quoted. Um, and the Mercure, uh, it, it was not the cheapest, no. uh, but it is very much, when you walk into, into that room, into the international suite of the Mercure, uh, you cannot help but feel wow it's got a wow factor it really it? does you you walk in and there's like all the bright lights there's tables and tables and tables of scenery um and it just it, it's amazing it's not like anything that i had seen before um it was actually my second ever tournament it was, going yes. to uh, so i think i was there year two or three perhaps yeah you won by uh, sword I did, yes. Yeah. So I think was that year two. Yeah, it was been year two. That would have been come because year three you were roped. Yes. Into helping out. So year two, that would have been year two. Um, and for me, there was just that wow factor. And before that, I'd only ever played in like a little tiny local tournament. I think it was maybe twelve people. Um, and you know, I, I didn't really think that the the tournament scene was going to be my thing. You know, it was really kind of uh, not really my my kind of uh, anything that I've been particularly interested in. But going there, it kind of really invigorated me, and I saw like, wow, this is what the game is all about and it's not just about playing the games as well you know it's it's about like gathering those people from across the globe absolutely into one place absolutely and one thing that i found with war gaming full stop not just with strategy battle game and and, and fire article and the like but you know there very much is this perception that it's uh, you know it's a bunch of people in trench coats and who never wash who are in dark rooms um, you know yep. there are diverse communities in, in <laughs> you know lots of different diverse communities not just not just for uh, for war gaming uh, but how incredibly social war gaming can be uh, and for me that's that's definitely one of the highlights and Ardicon I guess is a fine example of that because you do have players from all all across the world you know uh, the USA Canada Australia New Zealand loads of different European countries uh, all kind of united different, different backgrounds different jobs different languages uh, you know different wealths everything yeah uh, all united by one single passion coming together and ultimately making more friends in what is a celebration of of our hobby so of SBG and of, of SBG absolutely and, and, and of Middle Earth as well so we'll yes. come on to that a little bit more uh, later on um, so first off t- let's talk about the tournaments then so the actual tournaments that are held on there so what goes on on the Friday uh, so we we're very keen for for Ardicon, uh, in order for it to be a convention, as it were, uh, that we wanted this to stretch beyond just being a weekend's worth of gaming. Especially if people are travelling from you know from all around the world, uh, we want people to be able to make a holiday in the UK, uh, and Ardicon just be part of that holiday. Uh, so always a big part of the plans was to make sure that we could run something on a Friday. Um, that of course increased the cost which meant on the first year uh, we could only run something on the Friday evening Uh, but since then uh, we've had all of the Friday and an absolute key fundamental part of Ardacon is the fabulous Chaos in Arda. Now Chaos in Arda is a different way of playing the game which was formulated by the DCHL, our good friends over in Arlington, Virginia, uh, specifically Devin Moreno uh, who takes the lead on that front Uh, and it is a battle royale card objective version of the game where you get you know three or four players around the table playing a kind of uh, rolling objective game where you pull cards you must try and achieve those objectives as the game goes and it's so much fun and because it's so much fun i can't think of a better version of playing the game that would that would break the ice absolutely because I, I you know that we've already discussed that as a, a, a wealth of different types of people and Again, there's there's people that might be a little bit nervous. It might be their first tournament. You know, there's I know there were people that um, came on the Friday that had never played a game of SBG before, or Absolutely. very very you know were very kind of nervous about the rules. And it's a great way of getting people kind of a bit more comfortable with both playing and kind of meeting yeah. new people as well. And um, you know, it, when I've played um, Chaos and Arda, it's probably been some of the most fun games because yeah. it isn't necessarily just about player skill. It's it's you know, it can be completely random because of the objectives that you draw yeah. or the cards that you draw. Um, so, you know, it isn't necessarily about 
kind of being the best player it is just you know, some of it is down to luck as well and we, and we encourage that we, we encourage people to real, to take it for what it is um, you know that it is supposed to be a fun icebreaker it's a warm up for some people it's an opportunity to you know warm up the tongues as much as warm up the dice rolling Absolutely, hands yeah. and, and get chatting to people and start feeling confident start feeling a bit more comfortable again with the rules you know some people who are travelling to Articon as you suggest it's their first event they see that it's a, a flagship international event that lots of people are coming to um, so it's a really good opportunity for them to kind of hone and fine tune that before they get into, I guess, the the more serious business of the World Team Championships and Grand Tournament, which occur the next couple of days. Absolutely, and that was won by Dominic Hindmarsh this year, so, wasn't so it? It was, and he's so, Manchester's very own. Right? He is, yeah, and he's actually been on the channel. Um, myself and Steve played him in doubles last, I think it was about November time. So if you want to go back and check out that video, um, that would be fantastic. So what else goes on on the Friday then? What's the what's the other tournament that goes on the Friday? So an, another really fun way of playing, I guess any gaming system, um, but SPG as well, is being able to play with a friend and get, uh, get some doubles going. Uh, this is also another opportunity to potentially be paired with somebody that you've not met with before uh, and forge a friendship that might not have been there previously, or just play with a gaming buddy who you might normally be your opponent when you're playing back at home you join forces and you go out there and you test your your metal against other SPGs from around the world now this is also designed to be really good fun uh, we uh, try and discourage it from being overly overly competitive it is just three games it's a bit of a run chase you know with it being three games and there being so many people there of course you're gonna get quite a few people on max wins uh, but we of course do have a system for getting around that which effectively is a form of minor major victory uh, by completing oaths, uh, secret oaths throughout the game of which we have a set that you can choose for doubles uh, and then also in the grand tournament um, and world team championships as well. Uh, so that happens on the Friday afternoon. However, we introduced the third style of tournament yep. uh, this year for Ardacon, which yep. I guess we're talking about Let's next. go back to doubles just for very quickly for a sec. So who won the doubles this year? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I do, luckily enough. Second was, place was Tom and Damien. It was, Gino, it was. So. They were second place, but it was Jose Moya and Mario Ortiz this year. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, so they, they did really well, so well done to those guys if they are watching. And fantastic prizes as well. You know, one thing that was really great about th this year is that we were able to use uh, some of the fantastically fantastic donated trophies from Games Workshop yes. themselves, who obviously support Articon. Uh, we're able to use those for the likes of Chaos in Ardacon, so rewarding the fun side of the game for doubles, so rewarding again another fun format of the game. Uh, we're also able to use those for painting competitions, which we'll come on to later, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just going back on to, to doubles, um, again, it was in my first year that's where I met um, Andrew Cox for the first time uh, were you partnered with him? no I wasn't he was partnered up with Steve and I, I decided because I was I was kind of working on that day so I was just bobbing uh, bobbing in and out um, kind of during the evening but that's where I met um, Andrew and, and Steve and I spent a bit of time with them um, and obviously it's just bonded that kind of that friendship between us now which is Absolutely. which is great and again I think that just goes to, to show kind of the, the effect that Articon has and, and playing in tournaments against these people brings people have. together it does indeed so there was another tournament that goes on on Friday it's a very busy Friday there's a lot going on it was so and it was, was especially busy because you know, a couple of our referees couldn't make it on the Friday yes um, you know, which put a lot of pressure on on yourself and I, but I think we uh, we managed it pretty we, well. We, we held up. Uh, shout out to Tawny for for making that a bit easier. Yes, absolutely. We'll, we'll discuss Tawny in, in, a, in a bit. Um, but yes, yeah, so there was the Masters going on as well, wasn't there? So tell us tell us about the Masters and kind of what the the vision for the Masters is. Okay, so Articon couldn't happen without the support of some incredible, uh, I guess, influences back in their home countries around the world. So uh, there are various. Uh, I guess uh, heroes of their communities um, all across the globe who are fantastic at promoting SBG uh, wherever they are uh, and have really got behind the Articon project mm -hmm. uh, and every year we've, we try to find ways of rewarding that uh, whether it be I guess financial rewards uh, so if a captain is able to get together a team you know we've, we've rewarded them with a plane ticket or if they've got together a full team of nine, you know, we've looked at things like hotel rooms and all, all different kind of ways of, of rewarding that effort, really, of getting out there and championing what it is that we do uh, at Articon. Uh, and, of course, it couldn't happen without them. But those rewards have always been a little bit clunky to, to organise and, to be quite frank, you know, incredibly expensive mm. uh, post-tournament as well. Um, so we wanted to look at a, a different way of, uh, of rewarding, uh, I guess, 
the Italians or the Spanish or the Germans or the Americans uh, where we could. Uh, and of course, we've got a huge amount of strength in our brand now. You know, Articon was in its fourth year this this year. Uh, it's proving to be quite a success, which you know I'm, I'm obviously honoured to be able to say. Uh, and we felt that something that that would allow nations, I guess, to to scale in their reward yeah. was supporting their flagship events back home um, and awarding. Uh, prizes to those events which which would be well sought after in time so it's a bit of a concept run this year uh, but we wanted to create uh, an SBG system open series um, now other systems have have uh, I guess versions of this where you can for example go to a regionals uh, and win a place in the nationals and so was this semi inspired by other tournaments that you've been to on other uh, systems that you've played um, so yeah I've played a, a bit of X-Wing since Eleanor was born um, just with it being less hobby uh, less hobby time a bit of a quicker setup as mm -hmm. well uh, I can get a couple of games in with Eleanor around and it, and it not be sort of impossible to manage um, with the number of models and the like um, and there is a, an amazing community mm -hmm. in, here in Stockport Element Games uh, the Sith Takers which I'm very proud to kind of be part of um, and yes uh, so I guess partly inspired by X-Wing uh, there is this system of you know you can then win a Nationals which then gets you a place in the Euros or uh, a system open and winning one of those can get you a place in Worlds Yeah. and I guess if we were to look at Articon as being Worlds SBG is a much smaller game uh, mm -hmm. as a player it base is, yeah. than, than X-Wing, um, but we could kind of maybe put together a system a system open series, um, and the winners of those system open series would win themselves a ticket to Articon, uh, but not only that, would win a place in a special event which would take place on the Friday, uh, which would absolutely sort of satiate the, the appetite for competitive gaming. Yeah. Um, an SBG International Masters event because this, you know, it, it, those at those events, you are going to be getting people that really want to compete in the Masters. So you are going to be getting the best of the best entering from those countries. But then at that Masters event, you are getting the the best of the best, almost like the Premier League of 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 SBG uh, gaming. On on the whole, that's going to be the case. Obviously, there are going to be some situations where the person who wins the event, who maybe is you know the best player or the most competitive, can't make Articon, mm -hmm. so it then gets offered to the person who's second or the person who's Third. that's always going to be a case when it comes to trying to attract people from around the world uh, but the premise is there and I guess it comes back to all war games uh, SBG is no different uh, people can play the game on different levels so you know you can be the, the, the themiest player who just just wants to kind of effectively reenact uh, scenes from the movies and, and, and the books yeah uh, with your favorite models that you've you know put a lot of love and time into into painting and there are other people who who are seeing it effectively as chess you know they want to they want to test their their tactical capabilities uh, against the best of the best uh, and I guess the masters is giving those players uh, that as an option rather than potentially doing chaos nada or, or, or doubles you know yeah. so it's just another way of playing the game uh, and it's proved to be a success and very popular. Absolutely. So, how many entrants were there this year? So, uh, the format is always going to be was always going to be determined by the number of people that we had entered. Uh, initially, I think that we had uh, thirteen. It went to fourteen because Poland applied in time to to to, be, to have a, a system open. Uh, we also had last year's Articon World Champion, yeah. uh, Jay Clare, of course, writes the rules. Uh, we had a place for him, so we had 15 entrants. And that allowed us to um, create a format, again, quite different than what people might normally go to for SPG, a knockout style format where you effectively play through two halves of a draw and so you are only left with two players who won all of their games who fight off in a, in a final. And we wanted to give the option that those players who maybe lost out, who, who weren't interested in playing for ninth, 10th, 5th, 6th or whatever else, uh, that they could drop and go and enjoy the rest of the convention because they've obviously got a lot of SPG ahead of them or they could carry on playing and the knockout format allowed for that. Um, so yeah, 15 players this, this 15 year. 15 players and um, I believe the final was against two very solid opponents, shall we say, um, and they actually played in the final of the GT last year. You, you couldn't, you wouldn't have needed to be much of a boxing promoter to market uh, what happened with the Masters. So you know, on completely opposite sides of the draw, even visually, as you looked at the graphic, you had Jay Clare, who was last year's world champion, uh, in one corner, and then you had the Australian System Open uh, winner, uh, Kylie. 
Kylie Stevenson or Kylie Nova as you'll see on Facebook uh, on opposite sides and as they played their games uh, they met in the final which was a repeat of last year's Articon World Championship final so it was the rematch it was a real it, it was, was a it fantastic was the rematch, rematch yeah. you know, I would have loved to have had the time to do the graphics for that you know we're more facing off in kind of boxing style <laughs> next Rocky, year we'll get that we'll, uh... Rocky versus Apollo Creed style or, or, or whatever else um, and yeah you, you couldn't have created a, a, a better narrative yeah, and I believe it was quite some game as well. Yeah, absolutely. So well done to Kylie for winning the first Masters. Absolutely, Kylie went on to win it, so she got her revenge on Jay after after last year's uh, loss in the final against Jay for the for the World Championship, uh, and of course all of that was streamed by the fantastic STF. Absolutely, uh, Andreas Spilfreningen, the Fellowship STF Wargaming Studios. I think you'll find they're called now. They are called that now, <laughs> but you know, yeah, go and check out. Die hard. <laughs> yeah. If you uh, if you want to go and check out um, all those videos and a lot of the streams from Articon this year, go and check out STF. Um, a good friends of the channel, uh, especially Andreas. So go and check them out. Um, so we had Kylie in first place, we had Jay in second place, and we had Javier Cabrera Artero in third place in the Masters this Absolutely, year. Absolutely, after playing off third place. Again, Against uh, against the Finn yeah. Adrian, um, so you know that, that it was just amazing to see some of those matchups. It was really really cool. Uh, a lot of intrigue there. A lot of people asked a lot of questions about it, and as a result of it, we've already had lots of inquiries yeah. about um, potentially new system opens uh, for next year. So who, uh, we got any of that confirmed? Yeah, so we've had a lot of interest. The the one that I'm I'm really pleased to be able to confirm right off the bat, who's got me a lot of the event details, is fully behind it. You know, there are certain uh, criteria that you have to meet to be an SPG system open. Ardcon is all about inclusivity, not exclusivity, um, and as such, a system open can't be a closed format tournament, which is invite only. Uh, the idea is to encourage people to travel around for games. Uh, remember, by winning, for example, the uh, the USA system open you don't have to be an American that doesn't mean that you represent America uh, you just are the USA system open open winner um, and this year we're proud that New Zealand are already on, on the books but we've also already got a couple of handfuls you know that are, that are interested that we could expand and that will very much determine what kind of format we follow for next year whether it becomes something which is more Swiss based whether it be cut based knockout based or the like uh, so we get more feedback for that and we're going to create something which is bigger and better next year awesome looking forward to that really looking forward to that yeah. um, and then the main event the, the main tour- event the main event the grand tournament so talk us through that what's uh, what's the format of that so uh, again one of my, my my best experiences in wargaming was going to the Nova Open with my friends and colleagues from the GBHL podcast um, and competing as part of a team you know it was amazing uh, getting more of a buzz from watching your teammates do well whether yeah. it was in a doubles format or the singles format um, than it was even for your own individual endeavour. You know, the fact that we that we did well obviously helped, but um, but you know that that was very special. And I was quite keen for that to be part of what Articon was going mm-hmm. going forwards, and people could experience that. At the same time, um, you know, there's a lot of individual ever endeavour in SPG. I felt that if you went purely down the route of um, sort of national based teams, then then you create exclusivity. Uh, obviously, I wanted a grand event, and for you to have a grand event, you've got to have attendees and lots of them paying tickets so that you can afford it. Um, so it had to be inclusive. So the way that we went was that Articon, the Articon Grand Tournament, is an individual tournament with a team element. So yes, it is the WTC. I guess purely because I got in there first with that yeah. name, you know, in that sense, it's as it's as simple as that, really. Um, but at the same time, it's a, it's an individual tournament with a team element of scoring. So you enter the tournament, and you can enter enter it as an individual, or you could choose to enter it as part of a team. Now, if you enter it as part of a team, all of a sudden there is just one army building restriction which is placed on you, which is uh, nobody in that team can uh, repeat named heroes. So you couldn't have two players on the same team having Gandalf the White as mm-hmm. an example. One could have Gandalf the White, one could have Gandalf the Grey, uh, but you couldn't have two lots of Gandalf the White. And this has changed over the years, but this year we, we kept it quite simple. Yeah, I think, you know, with the, with the expansive ranges available now and, you know, a, a lot of models coming back into production and just this, the vast number of, of armies available, I don't think that becomes a huge problem these days. because It, do, it doesn't, but what it also does is it artificially uh, leans a little bit of pressure 
uh, across the event on there being diversity. Mm -hmm. So it means that as a result of the team element, people who want to sort of take that team ele element um, sort of seriously, uh, it means that you're more likely to get a variety of armies. You're not just going to see the same profile over and over and over again. Well, that, that shouldn't be the case anyway, uh, which is quite nice. You know, it can be for sure. It came up once this year. Somebody yeah. found themselves inexplicably... Uh, I think they played like against like five Army of the Dead. Yeah, a, in a poor Arash. I really felt for him. I felt for him as well. <laughs> you know, he came up to us and asked if there was anything that we could do. And we can't really, because you can't choose your matchups. It could just be that you didn't want to play against that because it's a bad matchup. Um, you know, I felt for him. But that should be the exception rather than the norm. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, you play, you, you play through the tournament. You cannot play somebody in your own team. So if you've got a very strong team, it means that you've got less chance of meeting against, you know, other very strong, strong players, players yeah. you know, or, or equal kind of level players across the whole tournament, um, you know, which is pretty good. It means that you're more likely to play against players who aren't local. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people travel to Ardacon and maybe they're coming here and representing a club. And, you know, it can be a little bit demoralizing if you are then drawn against somebody from your club who yeah. you play week in, week out. And the team element means that you get rid of that as a sorting issue. You get rid of that situation where you get a bunch of people coming to the TO desk when the draw is done and they say, well, look, you know, we're both we're both from Nottingham, and we, we play each other all the time, or you know, we both come over from here, or we both come over from there. So it just guarantees that you are going to avoid your gaming buddies throughout the tournament. So it's all to kind of enhance the event and ex enhance the, the the gaming experience for everybody that's attending, really, as oh, well, wasn't it? Absolutely, you know, none of, none of these decisions are made on the fly. There's a, a big thought process that goes into it, whether people think that it's right or wrong. You know, we do think long and hard about how we can. Um, you know, avoid certain situations or create certain situations. Yeah. And the team ele element, like I say, it prevents that situation which can happen tournament to tournament where you are drawn against uh, somebody that you play play with regularly. It happened quite a bit with the doubles because we don't have that mechanic in the doubles. And even in the doubles format, when there are less pairings, we saw multiple teams coming over and saying, look, we brought the same armies, we're, we're from Germany, can we swap? Uh, which you know in that format we were able to do so it kind of artificially prevents that from happening it also means that you get that buzz that we as the GBHL podcast yeah. got from going to Nova there is nothing better than having team dice and team polos and and it, show, flags. and it like shows real team camaraderie, oh, especially when it comes to the awards at the end as well. And they're all like cheering from each Cheer other. No, it's the like, football it's great. It's yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It's incredible. It's it's really, incredible. really great um, kind of feeling and, and yeah. things to see that. So. This year, who won the GT? Well, what happens is after the sixth game, uh, you end up with two top players. Um, and like I say, because of the, the, the number of people at the tournament, um, you know, it's quite important that we fit in X number of games. You can't, you, you can't only have four games or five games in a tournament of, of that size. Uh, and ultimately, with the team dynamic as well, there is that chance that you, end, you could end up with multiple people on... Uh, the same number of uh, victories, hence the Oath system, which is effectively minor and major victory. Um, and even then, this year, we ended up with three players who'd won all of their games, um, just in third place, just missing out from the U from the USA because he hadn't managed one of his oaths, uh, was Jacob Hall. But congratulations to that man. Yeah, like, well he had a very strong, strong he tournament. He did, yes, absolutely. And I, I know he was buzzing as well to have, uh, have played so well in the, uh, played, in the tournament. He placed really well, and he was, of course, the Masters representative uh, as well for the USA. Then the top two players will play against each other. This also prevents a situation where, uh, let's say, the two best players in the world are in the same team, that you end up with a situation where those two players never play each other for the world championship, which just wouldn't feel right. Um, so at that point, the top two, whether they're in the same team or not, have to play each other in a championship round, which other people can watch via stream mm -hmm. if they wish, to listen to on their headphones and we put it up on the big screen. Um, it was amazing seeing that excitement. You know, everybody kind of on their phones and, and listening uh, along to, could we, it was, um, projected onto the big screen but obviously right. you can't hear it because we don't want to be uh, interrupting the uh, um, the players so everybody was listening on their earphones and it was just everyone was like uh, it's like a sea of of quietness in there you know everybody know, just really kind scary of scary with that yeah, people as well um, which was fantastic that everyone was really kind of uh, focused on who the, the eventual and also distracted was. so we can begin our tournament close down yes, which, is, which, is, which is great yeah. without getting everybody's that worked really well this year <laughs> um, it did go really well it did so who were the top two players and who were, who were playing on the stream uh, so playing on the stream, we had Callum Edens for the first time in mm -hmm. the final. Always a strong, solid performer, not just at Ardcon, but uh, you know in the UK tournament scene. A member of the Wanderers in the Wild, who of course are previous, uh, not last year but the year before, uh, World Team champions. And again, they did they did well this year. Uh, and 
I, I guess representing the UK yep. in that sense uh, and he was playing against Damian Dudatz from Poland who made their return this year um, so a really really good final yeah um, and I believe that Damian's list was an impossible alliance as well um, which you might have been surprised no, which, uh, which is fantastic to see because um, just ahead before the tournament um, we had a new FAQ that came out which made impossible alliances even a little bit more difficult than they were previously um, and actually it's, it, it just goes to show that even with an impossible alliance that you say even, can. you say even with well, I, I haven't really played SPG for a while, so don't 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 put too much yeah, on yeah, anything yeah. That, that I say. But you know, just at a glance and having played the, the game previously, whilst there are certainly disadvantages for being impossible allies, you can also see advantages to being impossible allies. Um, you know, in, in particularly in certain cases. So yeah, I guess as long as you as long as you protect against some of those disadvantages, the advantages are worth a lot more. And I guess that was proved by the fact that he went on to to win. Yeah, and he um, is a very talented player anyway in his in his absolutely. own right and you know that, that's not that's not taking anything away from you know he is a very talented player he, he, he's, he's, he's he really seemed to you know enjoy the tournament you know and that's really important you don't want people no matter how competitive to be walking around you know sad and angry. you're not going to please all the people all the time um, but he very much seemed to be enjoying his tournament lots of people had positive things to say about uh, the gameplay experience versus him just goes to show that you know uh, even to win the, the biggest SPG tournament in the world you don't have to be win at all costs yeah, or absolutely. create a negative playing experience um, so yeah congratulations to that man and you, you have to come back next year because he's of course won a place definitely in the yes absolutely so I'm looking forward to seeing that Damien uh, again next commiserations year. to Callum as well yeah because, absolutely uh, a, a hard fought game I believe that Damien brought was it uh, Goblin Town and a Shade Goblin Town is really strong yeah strong. absolutely really changes. very very strong Callum had kind of a mismatch of, of, of good is that right? So, I, I don't know what Callum had. He not he, you know historically he has been someone who who might uh, bring like a, a, a dwarven front line supported by by elves and the like. So I'm not sure what, exactly what he brought this time, but I imagine uh, that that would have been the flavour of what he would have gone the route gone gone down the route of this year. Uh, but commiserations, Callum. Again, great great to have you down. Yeah. If you guys want to check out the army lists that these guys used as well, you can log in to the Tony website, um, and if you just search for Articon. Um, you should be able to find the website and there is a, an alarming list for the top three um, players on there. Um, and just team tam championships, um, we had uh, the Band of Bros in uh, third place from France. Absolutely, so the way um, that this has worked out is you literally just take the, the four best, the teams of between four and nine people and you take the four best scores. So this is the thing as well, you know, if you've got a team of nine, if you're not doing particularly well, you still have that experience of, of, of you could go on and win something as a team so it's just important to go and support each other you know one of the thing that was amazing by the way as soon as the the polish saw the draw they had like this team meeting they yeah, all yeah. got around to support their their man as it were and i thought that that was pretty magical sort of watching that and they were talking about the scenario and the strengths and um you know if any of them have played callum and you know all that kind of thing so that was really cool but you basically take the best the best four scores and the lowest number from the placings added together you know, wins you wins you the category, and there's a few, there's quite a few prizes for for most sports. Yeah, like potential of ninety prizes to be given out. Yeah, so it is. It was a really long uh, awards ceremony. Absolutely, um, always. But, uh, but it, there is always going to be just because there's so many awards to give out. So we had the Band of Bros in third place. We had Team Knots, who are previous winners. Uh, they were they were last year's winners. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who came second place, and we had Team Poland, obviously with Damian as part of them as well, who came in first place, yeah, which is the first team to win uh, win our Articon World Team Championships uh, twice. They they obviously took it the first year. Mm -hmm. they, they took it the first year. So congratulations to Team Poland. Well done, guys, uh, for winning it again. We also had um, you know you have, you've got the best in the rest of the world, so not including the UK and Ireland and the UK and Ireland top three as well. Um, so again, it's just more opportunities to give out give out prizes more prizes more prizes and there was a most sporting team as well can you remember who there they were? was it was um i can't remember the name of the team um it was the uh wardens of the middle wardens of the middle well, how could i forget them and you know a lovely bunch of guys the and I, I i'm i'm really glad that they won that <laughs> Really glad that they won that because they they were all like dead friendly. They were really it's the approachable. the Utrecht guys, isn't it? It's the guys from Utrecht. Is that right? Could be. Yeah, I think it's the guys from Utrecht. Yep. Yep. So I mean that that's that's the prize to win, isn't it? Where you know, as a team across the board, more people are voting for you for as their favourite games than anybody else. I mean, it's nice to know that people like you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and they won some superb glass trophies that were um, very 
generously uh, donated by Rebel Base Gaming this year. And yeah, who were our um, partner for the event. And you know, thank you so much to Johnny from Rebel Base Gaming, providing swag bags, table numbers. He was the stall there. You know, it was great to see him do so well. But he was offering discounts to everyone that was there. He was busy. Um, you know, those guys who who provide that side of it, the vendor experience as well, are just as important to Articon as uh, as you know. So we'll have a bit, a bit more of a chat about them in a minute and just yep. uh, just kind of go through who was there and the like. So we talked about the tournament quite extensively there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's a uh, lot to cover. There is a lot to cover. Are any of you surprised? Um, Haven't seen uh, maybe a speak friend in question previously? Or? Exactly, yeah. This is, this is always going to be a long video. You ever video. need long content on Top Table <laughs> Gaming, you know where to come. <laughs> Definitely, we, we, we know that. Um, it's my first video on it. I've never been on this channel before. Haven't you? I don't believe so. We'll have to get you on a bit more often. Anyway. I live around the corner. <laughs> We're here to talk They're about... are obviously really good friends. <laughs> I see enough of you as it is. Um, <laughs> so we've talked about the, the tournament itself. So what else is going on at Articon? So, you know, people enter this game and hobby on lots of different levels, and we want to make sure that the, the guys who are interested in middle earth strategy battle gaming purely from a painting or conversion perspective can be rewarded as much as somebody who's coming to play in the tournaments. Uh, and we want that to be a real draw. We are effectively trying to create a golden demon for middle earth strategy battle game where you get the very best painters from around the world whether they're interested in playing games or not, they feel that there is a reason for them to, uh, I guess, home in on Manchester once a year, have something to paint for and compete against the very best other painters in the world, which is why being able to provide such fantastic prizes this year uh, was a huge part of that. And yeah. We did simplify it this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we went for three lots of categories. Yep, so what was the first category, which was, that was on the Friday? On the Friday, yeah. So uh, we've got two participation categories this year. So effectively, you could choose a miniature or an army uh, from one of the armies that you used in the tournaments. Um, on the Friday, it was best painted army yeah. participation. So, uh, and that went to Scott Whitefoot, didn't it? A very talented painter. Absolutely, and it was quite funny. I'd had the conversation with Jack Whitefoot. Now, now Jack, uh, I've been working with Jack over the last couple of months. He's been incredibly patient as we've developed a fantastic custom uh, 3D printed uh, trophies yep. for, for Articon. He, he also supported the event by supplying the Mike Royal Fate Trackers. Yes. The swag yeah. so thank you I so saw much. them in use quite a lot over the weekend as well, which was fantastic uh, to absolutely, see. Absolute, absolute genius. Really, really great painter as well. And he actually said, oh, I've not entered Best Painted Army this year because I want to give my brother a chance. So it's quite quite funny that, that he went on to win it. Yeah. Uh, and it was quite a spectacle, wasn't it? It was a spectacle. So he'd done a Moria board um, and the, the army is just absolutely beautifully painted. Um, what really kind of drew me to it was like the, the water effects just not just on the base of the the um the board but also on the base of each miniature as well and the cave drake which was kind of set up yeah, on a rock gorgeous. it had like a turtle um, swimming through the water on the base which is just the attention to detail was absolutely insane yeah, the skill level doing all those water effects it's, is, it's just something else. Uh, it's, i wouldn't even know just, where to start no exactly it's, it's, that's just kind of next level it's not just the the beautifully painted miniatures it's just the setting and everything was absolutely fantastic so, yeah, so. well done Scott. congratulations fantastic yeah. work um, so then on the Saturday we went to best single miniature um, in the participation category Ooh, and this this was really tight I know that uh, James Collard of, of Brushstroke obviously fabulously talented painter really really pleased that, that, that him and Matt Davies were uh, we're judging this year. I think it gives a, an, an extra level knowing that uh, your painting miniatures are being judged by other expert painters. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I know that the advantage of being able to pick up miniatures like that where they really cannot separate them. You yeah. know, they found it so hard to separate between first and second in best painted uh, single miniature. So to be able to pick them up and look around and almost looking for maybe you know something from a technical point of view which just isn't quite as good as maybe on the, on the other person. It's just one tiny millimetre here or there. There. And that's literally what it, it came down to yeah. um, in, in every uh, in every situation. So, in first place this year, we had Thies de Young uh, yeah, from the Young. Rotterdam uh, White Scars. Now, I do have a theory uh, yeah. because the Rotterdam White Scars uh, normally descend on Articon and on mass, um, and because they are you know they're absolutely committed zealous hobbyists if you go and check out the Rotterdam White Scars channel you'll see what I mean you know they they, they rarely play a battle report with with anything uh, less than a stunningly painted army in miniatures uh, my theory this year is that it's not to do with the fact that that we left it a little bit late to, to no, nothing to do with that at all nothing to do with that at all um, but I think they just wanted to enter and, uh, and try and win it and uh, you know hats off to Thace because that Delgamere not Delamere yeah that Delgamere is 
stunning the free hand that that's what really drew the the judge's eyes to that particular miniature um it was the it was the really subtle free hand that he'd done on there it wasn't kind of really in your face um it, it was just absolutely stunning and to win against you know the competition that he had sebastian grisak one of the best painters in in spg also yeah uh, who who had painted the most marvelous gorgeous arwin you yeah. know, and uh, and Sebastian, you know, I think it's a good time to bring up a, an old Hobbit hobby of mine. You know, if you would like to send uh, a, a, an Arwen like that uh, to me, you know, feel free. Be supporting the channel. You don't even play anymore, so you know. It's, it might it, encourage me to get back into it. It's just going to be sat on a shelf. But if you want to send it to Top Table Gaming, um, you know, it's absolutely fine. We'll make sure that you get the exposure. I will do another speak, the... friend, and question, <laughs> and talk about a game that I, I don't really know as much about now as, as I probably should. Uh, but you can ask me about Articon. But but um, just to go back to Sebastian, he he's um, he came second in two categories this week, uh, this last weekend. Absolutely. Um, and I, I was I was gutted for him because actually his, some of his, his entries were were amazing. But it wasn't even a second place uh, prize or a trophy for uh, what we're going to come on to the, the yeah. open category. We only had a second place thanks to uh, Whiteford 3D, who who at the, at the last minute decided that they wanted to donate uh, a couple of trophies for that. So thank you very much to those guys. Uh, and then as a result, congratulations to, to Sebastian for coming second yeah. in Best Painted Single Miniature Participation. Yeah, absolutely. And there was another one on the Sunday. Which was the open category. So this was basically for anybody. So it was any miniature that you wanted to paint from ideally Middle Earth, but it could be at any Absolutely, something you're really proud of. Uh, something you're really proud of, and that's it. Wasn't just for people who were um, participating in the tournament. It could be to anybody. So anybody that came for a, uh, for the weekend or just came for a day, they could enter a miniature into that competition. Um, and again, the standard in this was amazing. It was um, mind blowing. I mean, the premise of of this is that we we ultimately want people who are the very best hobbyists in the world to feel like there is a competition that is designed just for them where they don't have to pay an £80 ticket to come and, and participate in the tournament. They're not necessarily interested in that, but they want to come. They want to bring something uh, that, of course, they're not playing with. Um, that maybe they've spent the whole year preparing, you mm -hmm. know, as they would do for Golden Demon, knowing you're going to get a fantastic prize and knowing that the people that they're up against are some of the best painters in Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. Uh, and I guess that's the the idea behind uh, having the open category is that you don't. It doesn't have to be from an army that's being used. You can travel. You can pay five pound on on the door or ten pound if you want to be there for the weekend. Uh, and ultimately, you know, those guys can hang out. Maybe there'd be stations set up for them where they can paint with other other best painters uh, in the world, uh, and they can enter this open category. And this is, I think, something for for next year, which we'll we'll discuss. Um, well, I know some of the plans for next year in a mm -hmm. bit. Absolutely. Um, but um, for for next year, it's definitely going to be something that we want to make more of a spectacle of, um, and kind of make uh, a, a a bigger deal, should we say? Um, but the winner for this year was Lewis Collins. I know um, he was so chuffed. He and was so I, made up. I have seen because again, it was it was another Arwen. Um, it was. So, and and it, it it was absolutely stunning. I have seen it posted up on Facebook before. The pictures don't do it justice. It, they don't. And actually, seeing it in real life is like I've seen that before, but it looks so much better. It's more yeah. vibrant and. Um, so I think the pictures almost make it look, you know, almost slightly washed out. You don't kind of get to appreciate just how soft the blends are, yeah. uh, which in turn add realism. And you also understand just, you know, it's a high level of technical skill to be able to, to, to be able to blend like that, to be able to, you know, take your color from here to here, and it seem be absolutely seamless. seamless. Yeah, um, it was, it was amazing. Uh, and actually looked like Liv Tyler. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think he was definitely a worthy winner. And again, you know, there, there was a real kind of difficult in choosing the winner between Sebastian and Lewis as well in in, in this one. Um, but I think, you know, overall, I think the the, the, they, yeah. the standard was just absolutely fantastic. Congratulations to, to everybody who entered. And, you know, absolutely. And, you know, as, as we said earlier, even, even if you think, you know, you see some of these other guys entering next year, it's still worth entering because it was amazing to... To see so many people showing off their miniatures and showing off their models and and being proud of something that they had Absolutely. had worked towards. So we talked about kind of some of the competitions. So what else is there about Articon that makes it not just a tournament and makes it more of a an event? And this this question always gets me pretty nostalgic about the first year of Articon because that was very much a prevalent question when I was trying to, uh, I guess. Uh, share and communicate what the vision of Articon was. You know, 
what is it that stops it from being just a collection of tournaments into being a convention experience uh, now a large part of that is our partners our fabulous partners who uh, and vendors who mm-hmm. come and support the event and uh, you know we're very proud to partner with Johnny from Rebel Base Gaming um, you know he did a great job not only putting on like, you know a humongous store with a, a vast array of stock which is great for international uh, international attendees who may yeah. be you know these products would cost significantly more and there would be postage on top of that um, you know so almost providing a service uh, absolutely so we, we approached Johnny kind of quite late last year um, didn't we and and you know he pulled it out of the bag last year as well for, for yeah, article in 2018 uh, last, uh, um, last minute and uh, you know this year we said you know we, we really want you involved and, and things and he has blown he, it out the water he absolutely stepped up you know we, we were quite keen um, you know that if we are going to partner and effectively have a sponsorship and a relationship with uh, with a with a vendor coming in, um, that they should be able to add to the tournament experience. And you know we've got lots to thank Johnny. Not only was he incredibly generous in offering his normal twenty percent sort of off uh, products, Rebel Ga- Rebel Base Gaming, uh, but he also added a voucher in the swag bags. Uh, which gave five pound off if you spent over twenty five pound, which of course in war gaming is very easy. It's, to yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's on top of any twenty percent. So that was incredibly generous. There was a rebel based gaming dice in there. He made sure they were packed out. He supplied the most sporting uh, trophies for for you know from the sporting and, and even just. To- things that other people may not have realized but things like table numbers that's a huge help for for us um and you know it's it it looks smart as well really it was great to have him involved um and we're looking forward to having him involved again next year we also have matt davis matt davis a generation shift as well you know he's been a stalwart of articon since the very very beginning um i always use, use him as an example as well you know when i was first doing articon and trying to work out a pricing structure um, for for vendors and the like, I very much based based it on you know what maybe I could do for for Matt Davies and, and <laughs> charge GW exactly the same uh, that year, mm-hmm. and they did very very well from that Iron Hills uh, Iron uh, Hills yes, Dwarf release. I, so, so I gather in the so first article. So absolutely amazing uh, to have Matt still there. Um, and again, he was judging the payment competition, contributed to the swag bags just like Johnny did. Um, you know the raffle as well, which Johnny also contributed towards. Yeah. Um, so a big thank you to those guys. Yeah. And if you haven't checked out Generation Shift ninety two before um, it's really really worth checking out the bases that yeah. uh, he makes I, I pretty much exclusively base all my armies now on those uh, bases um, I picked up a load more over the weekend as well um, yeah, so, I forgot to. Yeah, so I, they're, they're, they're fantastic so it makes basing so so easy um, make sure you go and check out his Facebook page Absolutely. Um, we had Middle Earth models oh yeah absolutely fantastic to have those guys back so I mean the, these guys uh, I guess they kind of went viral online because they, they made a miniature of Rivendell, um, which even if you weren't into strategy battle game, I remember that being shared on like the One Ring yeah. net and stuff like that. It was it really kind of went out there. Uh, and we're really pleased to get them involved in year one. Um, they are dedicated uh, makers of terrain and sets from the movies. Um, they brought out a couple of books which uh, you know help mm-hmm. hobbyists uh, be able to replicate the type of terrain that they make, and they brought those along this year as well. Yeah, I, I believe it was um, it was about trees, and Des- deciduous trees, and the rock formations of the previous one. So yeah. I. I- ordered one of the um, Rock Formations one watches there and it arrived yesterday so I haven't had a chance to have a read through that yet but uh, looking forward to and they also contributed towards the raffle with that amazing board Hobbiton board Hobbiton yeah. boards display board really good for battle companies I think yes I mean, perfect, absolutely perfect for battle companies uh, and also painted the Chaos in Arda first and second place uh, trophies from Games Workshop so thank you so much to you guys uh, I really really hope that you are back again next year yeah definitely looking forward to having Dave and Keith back next year um, we also, also had the Galactic Knights there over the weekend. Absolutely. So coming back to you know what is it that takes Articon from being just a collection of tournaments into being a convention? Now the Galactic Knights are uh, you know I guess a, a semi-professional costuming club mm-hmm. um, where you know you, you're talking about the very best uh, you know they wouldn't say cosplayers but the very best in this this type of field. Um, you know, I guess test their their hobby against other people who who are doing the same. You know, these guys get brought in as as extras for various movies and the like. I can remember being incredibly proud when I saw that they were part of promo for the latest Middle Earth 
game on the PS4 or Xbox or whatever it was. Um, you know, these guys really are the bee's knees and we're really proud to be working with them. Now, part of the vision for Articon is to continue to expand the convention side of it. You know, we already have the hotel and we want to work in partnership with the Hotel de Mercure and the Galactic Knights to create something that Joe Public wants to come in and see and that fans of not just Middle Earth strategy battle gaming, but just fans of Middle Earth generally want to come and get involved in. Absolutely. And we definitely saw an expansion of that this year, didn't we? We did, yeah. So they all were all in their, their costumes over the weekend. So the uh, the Urukai general uh, was kind of barking orders. Stalwart. Uh, yeah, absolutely barking orders, telling you when the time was up. Um, they get yeah. a lot more attention. Like people do not listen to us when we're on the microphone <laughs> telling them what all. to do. But you know, when the Urukai general uh, stepped on stage to call fifteen minutes remaining, people stopped and listened. So, so yeah, it's a really good fun part of the event. You know. Um, we love having them there. They really add to that convention feel. Uh, and like I say, we really want to partner with um, with those costumers uh, for other sides of it, which we started to do this year. We had some some amazing entertainment going on in the bar, didn't we? We did. So there was uh, Level Up Leroy. Level Up Leroy providing a DJ set on the Saturday night. Now, this guy was fresh from New York Comic Con, to give you uh, an example. So if you want to come to Articon and party party, you know, I guess that is your opportunity to, to do so. And, and, you know, he's got some great ideas going forward. Um, so we're looking forward to potentially working with him again. Yeah. Um, so along with the Galactic Knights, they had like their their museum, shall we say, upstairs of all like the weaponry and um, props the that they made. Merkwood spider. Merkwood, massive Merkwood spider, you know, a life size Merkwood spider, um, which I know there's a lot of people posing for photos with. There's people kind of lying underneath it, and but they uh, only they only talk now. I've got no issue with spiders whatsoever. Um, but whilst we were there talking about this uh, on the Saturday night, uh, they informed me that it actually lights up, makes a sound, and moves. And I, I, I did have to say to them, I'm really glad that that did not happen whilst I was stood here next to it, not aware that that could happen. Because I, I missed, would have jumped out of my seat. I would have loved to have seen that. Yeah, it was pretty loved cool. to have seen it. Um, but, um, but also yeah. discussing with them, how do, you, how, how do you go through the process of coming to own something like that? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's, it's not something that you can just uh, just click, click through eBay and look, giant Merkwood yeah. spider or something like They're that. They're fascinating but, people. So, um, you know, really great to talk to them about, you know, the swords and their armor. And that was something else that they that they offered, uh, offered us and that they did for us. On the Friday night, there was an opportunity to go into the bar um, and to have effectively a Q&A and a seminar asking them about their hobby and learning more about costuming and um, and the things that they've been involved in and, and sort of how to do some of the things that they do yeah. followed by uh, a Middle Earth quiz which was you know even people who were just in the hotel for the night who knew nothing about Articon got involved in they Brilliant did yeah there, there was uh, I think there was one team that I think they got five points out of 70 um, but they tried they entered um, Good yeah, it, was, it was fantastic yeah, yeah. Um, and then as with every year, we always hold a raffle, uh, we which do. goes to... Well, on the Saturday night as well, we have Pop-Up Puppet Cinema yes, doing Jaws and Back to the Future. Um, so again, these guys go and do various uh, gigs at Comic-Con or, or uh, in fact, even music festivals and the like they go to to provide entertainment. So it's quite nice that they were able to do that for us on the Saturday night. Uh, it was pretty enjoyable. I caught some of it. Uh, so so the, e the evening entertainment on... Well, on both nights was very different to what you'd probably get at any other event. Absolutely, absolutely, and you know, and that's on top of things that we've seen, you know, uh, in previous years. Anyway, you know, we've, we we always have the guys from SPG Magazine, Tom and Damien, who do a, uh, a presentation on the Saturday evening, uh, effectively about the process uh, that goes into making the latest and maybe the previous edition of SPG Magazine. Um, so, a big thank you to those guys for doing that again, supporting Articom. Um, we're really we're always really proud to partner with them. Uh, and then also the Middle Earth team themselves on the Friday evening um, with some very exciting, you know, first first, first peaks, glimpses, first glimpses yeah. of, of news. You know, if you want to be the first to see the latest news in Middle Earth, you know, around August time, Ardacon is the place to be. So, and there were some exciting announcements, weren't there? Really, yeah. So the King of the Dead and the Heralds of the Dead, which we've been waiting a long time for the Heralds of the Dead. I think it's January time we've been waiting since. Yeah. Um, Call so me by a humbug, but I have held back from buying certain things from, from Middle Earth Strategy Battle Gaming under the rule that I need to paint the backlog. I need to get through some things before buying new, new, new stuff. You're deluded. Absolutely deluded. Uh, well, the, that King of the Dead. <laughs> like, what? What? Well, why would I use the old king? I mean, some of you might really like that miniature, but I'm like, I like, I've got an army of the dead. I need, I need, I need a new king of the dead now. 
absolutely stunning it's absolutely stunning St- um and we got stunning. we we got a taste at uh it's going to be a rohan supplement i think it's a rohan at war that's coming out next which i know you'll be quite excited about rohan yeah absolutely um so <laughs> you know it's it's great to see that and you know we were first i guess other than the middle earth team in the world to to be told about these new um, this new stuff that was coming down the line for us. Absolutely, really absolutely cool fantastic. that all of these things were announced and, and half an hour later it went onto the community page. That, yeah. was, that was pretty amazing. And they're like rock stars on the stage as well. They know? were. It must People be a, shouting. It must be a brilliant experience for them because there, there can't be any other environment where you know the lights go off, there's a spotlight on them, you've got the, the chandeliers have got spotlights going on some of the blue and the gold of Ardicon, you know, and there are people literally you know, roaring and cheering and taking their knickers off and throwing them onto the stage. I certainly did. Every single announcement. I know you did. I, I only didn't because I was commando. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you didn't have any in the first place. I didn't so, have any in the know. first place, you know. Um, you know, so that, that, that was absolutely incredible. Um, and as I was going to go on to say, every year we hold a charity raffle um, we do, we do. So we, we like to raise money uh, for uh, charities uh, and causes that are kind of close to the community's heart. Yeah. Um, so so last year we um, raised for um, in memory of Ian Baldwin. Yeah, Ian Baldwin was a, was a good kind of hobby friend of mine, and, and for many people, you know, a stalwart of the community, absolutely top bloke, and it obviously it was it was devastating to us all um, his illness and then subsequent passing. So it was nice to be able to. Uh, to use the strength of our community to raise some money for the hospices that looked after him and charity that looked after him at the very end. Uh, and in previous years, um, we supported, uh, I guess, two of our own, you know, in support of Hector, uh, his his dad, who used to bring him to the tournaments, Godolphin Blogs. Um, he sadly passed, uh, passed away. Um, so we supported a, a, a heart charity uh, in memory of him. Now this year, um, I guess a stalwart of our community, somebody who was definitely there in the dark times, who is probably a reason many of us kept our head in the hobby or got into the hobby, um, particularly through the, the, the One Ring forums, mm-hmm. uh, UK Freddy Bear, Dave Fredericks, uh, Flame of Shadow and Flame. Um, unfortunately, his family's going through a very difficult time as his as wife um, you know, recovers from various surgeries uh, because of some, some rare and pretty awful life-changing cancers. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's put a lot of strain on their family. So to be able to rally around as a community and raise some money to support them um, is, you know, it's a good thing and, and hopefully it does help them out. Absolutely. So, um, and there was, had some wicked prizes in there as wicked, well. Wicked so there was, uh, as we said, there was some donations from our, our supporters and the uh, the guys that had helped us out with the event. So from Generation Shift, Rebel Waste Gaming. Um, Jez from Ancestry Love the Craft, he sent a very beautiful dice pouch. Yep. Um, uh, Luke from Luke, Luke's APS, he gave us some um, flock. Um, uh, like basing packs and, and some tufts, uh, some yeah. tufts. Um, so we you know we had support from from all of um, all over community. Element Games gave us a couple of box games as yeah, well, thanks, which is fantastic. Um, and Dave Fredericks himself, he gave us um, a one of a kind um, tree master giant. tree giant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was absolutely beautiful. And I know when we kind of explained to people, you know, where that was from there was you know people wanted to win that people were entering to win that prize you um, can't enter your own raffle and you know exactly that that's how i was i, I felt really bad so you i can't to, enter your own so raffle, i have to give my tickets to every somebody else year, I, think. Um, I would love yeah. to win this i would love to win that you know, we provided a couple of swords like we always do yeah. Um, you know, you've won a sword raffle. I before. did, yeah, yeah. That was, I mean, that you don't was, have the sword. That, that, that was that was the year that I entered. Um, yeah, absolutely, uh, that that was playing at the tournament. So I didn't feel quite so bad about winning it. But no. um, but yeah, it's uh, you know we can't enter our own tournaments, but uh, our our own um, raffles. But there's some absolutely outstanding prizes. Yeah, it in certainly there. was. So thank you to everybody who supported that, either by donating prizes. Sorry if we've, we've forgotten you or anything to mention you. Um, but also to everybody who really got involved and bought raffle tickets um, and supported that. We'll, we'll definitely make an announcement at some point about how much money we were able to raise from that uh, and make that donation accordingly. Um, so yeah, absolutely brilliant that we're able to do that every year. Good stuff, good stuff. So, next year. Next We're year, already absolutely. starting to think about it. Well, we have to. So you know, it's one of the one of the uh, paradoxes, I suppose, of of, of running a, a large event like this. Is you never really get an opportunity to to enjoy it. You know, people come up to you over the weekend and say, you know, are you enjoying it? And you, you there's just too much going on in order to keep this uh, this this absolute leviathan moving. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is a real gargantuan beast. There's so many things to deal with to to just keep 
keeping it going that you, you don't get an opportunity to enjoy. You don't enjoy it when you're preparing it. You know, there are bits of excitement and the like uh, when certain things start to come together, but you don't really enjoy it because you're just trying to make it happen. There's, there's, there's quite a lot of stress involved with it. And, you know, we're trying, <laughs> trying to make sure that all kind of the, the moving parts are moving, that you be in touch with the right people at the right times, just checking up and making sure that everything is going to plan. Um, you know, there are so many moving parts to bring this all together, aren't Absolutely, there? It's, yeah. um, and you know, you've had a very busy year as well. You know, you've you've moved. You've got a, a brand new baby. Absolutely. Um, yeah. the, the events the events team have been chock a block. This is not our not our full time job. I guess if any one of us had had the year that we'd had, and the others had kind of I guess had a normal year. I mean, what is a normal year? But any of us had a normal year, then then maybe it wouldn't have felt like it like it did but all of us in one way or another have had um, you know either the highest of highs the lowest of lows and just a ton of things going on around us um, so you know there is that slight bit of trepidation and then even after the event you don't really get an opportunity to enjoy it there's this kind of on the Sunday evening we we clink glasses in the bar we did indeed uh, the it, it feels like the air is slightly let out of the balloon but the event's not over there are still people there that need to be entertained you know I still there were still bits of work that I had to do on that evening uh, and things to make sure that people were having a, a good time um, and then of course there's the event breakdown that comes after that and then pretty much immediately you have to start thinking about next year with it being an international event people need as much notice as possible and although it is you know difficult I guess for the UK players base um, to think about having to plan something a year in advance especially when we release tickets as early mm -hmm. as we do uh, it's just part of running a big international event is that people have to plan their holidays and the further away from the date that you can do that the cheaper it will be etc etc uh, so I've already gone in for debriefs with the hotel we're already uh, putting in place the things that we need to put in place to uh, support the uh, SPG system opens next year uh, well this this season and that starts immediately you know We've got uh, the USA system open at Nova coming up. You know, that's next weekend. Uh, we've got the, well, I don't know when this is gonna be released, but. Over the weekend, hopefully. Okay, so yeah. It's, no pressure. It's, it's imminent. Uh, after that, you've got the Italian system open, which is coming, you know, mid month. That's the 13th to the 15th. You've got, uh, on top of that, uh, the German championships, which is also the system open. And that's coming uh, that weekend as well. So we have to move fast. We have to get trophy support to those guys. We have to do the things that we need to do. Uh, and ultimately, we need to start uh, putting together our proposal for getting a date for next year. Um, so, yeah, you never really get to enjoy it because the work starts immediately <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh it's so we, we've got a, a, a busy few months i think we we're trying to get ahead of the game this year and make I sure that the, i think that everybody uh i think everybody uh, including myself would prefer to to have things sorted a little bit earlier this this year and take the pressure off absolutely absolutely so um you know things that we we had kind of new this year were, were tourney uh, which was kind of the way that we we ran the tournament basically Absolutely. so rather than being reliant on spreadsheets and things to manage that for 228 players is well, all... 236 registered 236. 236 registered i think the most amount of players that we had played at any one point was 222 including the ringer um you know tawny uh was definitely one of the big new features of Articon this year. Now in previous years we have been heavily, heavily reliant on literally the blood, sweat, tears, vomit, skin, <laughs> organs of Mickey Ward from Scotland who, you know, unfortunately he wasn't here with us this year um, but has been an integral part of making sure that, that Articon works year on year, flaying himself in the process, you know, we, we, he was our Wizard of Oz behind the curtain you don't see Mickey because he is just working flat out on a spreadsheet people are submitting their scores by pen paper he's going through it people are people so they submit their scores wrong he's having to make corrections he's managing the spreadsheets he's, he's backing them up he's spending all night often trying to fix things which are broken um, you know so to be able to kind of take the pressure off of that individual and have Andrew Cox develop um, a piece of software, an online piece of software uh, that would effectively manage the event to manage the tournaments uh, was a huge weight. At the same time, this event was really the acid test for it. It was, it was. There's never ever gonna be a, a harder uh, set of circumstances for Tawny than delivering it for the first time to 200 plus players live. Um, 
and it's really what what it needed. It had been used at the Norwegian Masters yeah. uh, without a hiccup, uh, and also at the uh, uh, Lachlan Zorpathorps tournament, Arda Unleashed. Uh, Arda Unleashed, yeah, yeah. Arda Unleashed in Brisbane, in, I think, in Australia. Um, again, without many hiccups. Uh, so it really was the acid test for it this year, and uh, and boy, does this thing have potential? Yeah, absolutely. I think you know there, there were. We're not going to sugarcoat it. There were a couple of little little issues where people were having difficulty finding, find, uh, navigating through the website. Um, there were a couple of bits where it didn't generate the the, yeah. the, the rankings and things that we, we kind of needed at that time. However, as we said, this was the biggest event that this uh, this system has run so far. Um, and and it know, will ever ever have to run. You know, really, yeah, well, uh, probably, 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 more than likely, more than likely. You know, it it, it really was going to be as, as tough as it was going uh, to get there was never going to be yeah. you know, any more anything to kind of test the system as much as Articon and you know there was there was kind of pressure from just the number of people accessing the site at the time the the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi in the hotel absolutely. and things absolutely. you know it was it was kind of crashed at one stage so it was probably the one thing that you know let's not be I'm, I'm a very experienced tournament organiser now you know so even with things sort of going last minute this year I was pretty confident about the, the actual sort of the moving of the glacier that is the event once it starts um, but of course one of the key parts of any tournament you know around the world is transition game to game you know it, it really is it's, it's the biggest part um, and Tawny absolutely absolutely helps that with that yeah, absolutely. Um, from a tournament organizer perspective the fact that players can submit their scores via their smart devices if they're you know if they're not able to access their their data or the the hotel Wi-Fi we had a spillover Wi-Fi and then we also had points at which they could enter at the front so we could do it for them and the like uh, at which point once everybody kind of understood the interface of it uh, the main delays really were actually players just not giving their scores in or putting incorrect scores in and not checking them with their opponents which would happen with pen and paper uh, anyway on a on a i guess an, on an even bigger scale exactly but it it made it a little bit smoother for us not having somebody in the back having to type in their their, their scores um, absolutely just somebody making sure that you know as as various kind of little bugs came up or things that we weren't sure about uh, came up could deal with you know tawny i i'm going to say now that once the user interface is completely intuitive probably for an app which only ever really shows the the attendee what they need to see at any given time and is completely intuitive you're not having to go, go down menus and those menus lead to dead ends or anything like that you know it is completely right you've got a push notification because you need to say whether you're here or not yeah. you know via via the app you know are you are, are you are you article on today oh look you know that's an hour before push notification you've got a half an hour push notification you've not said whether you're here or not yet 50 minute last call for you know at five minutes ago oh, unlucky you've missed out yeah because you know, yeah. you've received all of those push notifications oh you are attending great and then it shows the next bit which is when you're entered into the draw what table number you're on you know what and who your opponent is and being able to see their army list all on one one thing you know easy to access game starts the timer comes up and a button to click for submitting scores yeah you know does this match with your opponents has your opponent matched up their score otherwise you get push notifications again or it just doesn't let you do it yeah you know and really if the user interface side of tawny is absolutely nailed because from a to point of view like once we knew the pathways and everything it was straightforward once the players knew the pathways it was straightforward it was just getting to that point after the first couple of games yeah. you know it, it felt you know people knew what they were doing but actually it just needs to be a little bit more intuitive but I think you know Amazing. overall it um, was fantastic. It's going to be honestly, it's it's going to be incredible. Um, it really is. You know, it, it, it helped a lot this year already. Uh, it's well on. It's well on the pathway to being. It's got some fantastic features on right down to being able to sort of put photos up of your games and put profile pictures up so you know who your opponent is before you even get to the table and you know manage the painting competition for it by putting pictures up of that. Like I say, the rankings and uh, and things. It's all it's all on there. There's a few little things that that. That you know we we thrashed out during it, and we'll discuss after it that we think would make it even better. Um, but that process has, has has started, so you know in no time at all. I think that Tawny will be the market leading kind of piece of software for people. Everyone will want to yeah. use it for their tournaments. Yeah, and not necessarily just for for SBG, right? No. So, so congratulations to Andrew Cox. It's a real good job that he was there. Yeah, absolutely. To, to manage big that. thank you, buddy. 
Yeah, so thanks, thanks for doing that. Thanks for you know he was there as a player. Uh, I kind of suspected that he would never really get to play many many games because it's the first time it's being tested, um, and that was the case. So thank you so much for sacrificing your games to make sure that your your system was in in the best hands. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think at that point, yeah, we'll the, wrap up. Absolutely, I think that I think we've covered pretty much everything to do with uh, to do with Arbicon Arbicon, 2019. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, if you guys are interested in uh, Articon and getting tickets for Articon for Articon 2020, which will be the fifth year of the tournament. Yeah, big celebration. Um, yeah, big celebration. We've got kind of uh, a few changes planned and uh, and bits that are kind of in the in the pipeline now. Yeah. Um, make sure that you join the um, Articon SBG International Facebook yeah, group. There's a, there's a page, uh, you know, there's a page which is going to be great in terms of understanding more what's going on from the convention side of it. Although the strategy battle gamer side of it is kind of pushed through that a little bit as well. But the main thing is that there is a a group, uh, the Articon SPG International group, and you can see updates and conversations. Uh, relating to Articon will all go predominantly through that. We will also be using Tawny, so even if you uh, you're not currently registered on there get yourself registered because that allows you to also see results from last year and the like uh, you'll be able to I mean really Tawny takes away for the need to there to be you know even event packs and yeah. the like because it can all be managed through there especially when it's a bit more a bit more intuitive from a user experience so you know if you want to see what's going on with Articon you want to be ready to purchase tickets because all of them sold out within was it 72 hours 72 hours yeah it was really really quick really quick so remember you will probably be able to resell them as long as you don't leave it until the last day or whatever or the last week um, you know just make sure that your fingers ready to, to get on that basically yeah but fantastic thank you very much for coming today oh, it was nice to be able to talk into a camera yeah the first time. <laughs> it's been, been a long time been a long time yeah. was i rusty <laughs> no not at all not at all um but thanks for joining us guys i uh, hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you've enjoyed like this little roundup of articon 2019 um, make sure you check out the links below there's patreon down there there's links to all our social media accounts um, and make sure that you join the top table gaming um uh community facebook page as well which is definitely one of the best things about this channel you know it really really is uh, you've, you've, created, you've, 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 you've created a fantastic community on there whether you watch the videos or not that sort of gaming community it's got a real nice feel to that group so definitely get yourself in there you know even i comment on things in there and absolutely put, put post up so it's a, it's, a, it's a good place lovely group um so make sure you check that out and i have been top table ben I'm James. <laughs> am, I hot, am I Hot Gates Gaming yeah. James? Am I GBHL James? Am I Articon James? The Articon SPG. I think just James in this video. Just James in this one. Just James. Thanks for joining us, guys. I'll see you in the next video.